Hi Brazil, welcome to HBO Studios here in Berlin and this is How I Play. The High Brazil concept has been a live project since day one. What I love about performing live is that I can take ideas directly from the studio to the club. So I can create a concept album and perform that in a club within the space of a few weeks or a few months. A good example of that would be my Embers album for Records that was released in 2019. But when I wrote that album, I was visualizing it in the space of Panorama Bar. So Panorama Bar and the sound in that room, the shape and everything, that influenced how I produced the album, how I mixed the album, how I composed the album, just it fed into the actual concept and composition. And then delivering that album live in Panorama Bar was a really, really unique experience. So what I love about live, it, it creates this feedback loop between studio and club. I can create something in the studio, I can load it into my samplers, perform it in the club, see how it's reacting, see if it's working, does something need some tweaks, maybe it's ready, maybe it's powerful enough, and then I can take that back to the studio. So it creates a feedback loop where studio is going to club and club is influencing studio again. And again, I like that direct connection between studio and audience. So we're bypassing the whole distribution label system to deliver music directly to the audience, which is one of my favorite things about performing live. When I started playing live, I was using Ableton Live and lots of different machines, controllers, but what I found after a while was one having trouble in airports and I wasn't really enjoying it as much as I knew I would if I had a dollless computer system. So I removed the computer from the system and I reduced the amount of machines that I was actually working with. So I started with just an Octatrack and maybe a drum machine and loading audio into the Octatrack, performing it live and basically in totally throwing myself into this machine. And last year I added a second Octatrack. So what you're seeing at the moment is two Octatracks and a tier eight drum machine. The Octatrack has been amazing. Obviously it's a different ball game from using a computer. You've a lot more, I guess a lot more security using a computer. You can load more audio files. With an Octatrack you need to be way more organized. There's also a learning curve to it as well. So it's not all that intuitive. It took me quite a while to feel comfortable with the machine in a live context as well. But I feel in some of its restrictions is what really it's, its benefit in terms of a live instrument. And so that's why I decided to add a second Octatrack and I could break down my live sets in a really fluid way. But adding the second Octatrack also enabled me to perform longer and to, it gave me a lot more improvisational skills basically. So what you're seeing at the moment is the nucleus of my current live show. So let me break this down for you a bit. So on my right hand side here is the Octatrack Mark 1. So it, within this I, I can deconstruct, break down tracks into individual little parts. Uh, to my left here is the Octatrack Mark 2. This is the master sync or master clock. So everything is synced to the Mark 2. And in the middle I have a Roland Tier 8 drum machine for some improvisational drums. And this is the Mark 1 Tier 8 and I really love the Tier 8. It has a big footprint so it's not ideal for traveling with cases and stuff, but it's very robust. You can bring it to a club and it's, you know, you, you can be confident it's not gonna break and it sounds really, really good. So I'm a big fan of the TR8 still. And also, usually I'll bring along a synth, which I can trigger by MIDI from the Octatrack 2. So I usually use a 303 clone or like a Moog Siren or something like this. Um, how this works is basically I can flip this into MIDI, I can select the channel, dial in some MIDI information, I can send that to the machine and that mach and the machine comes back into the sampler here. So this sampler comes back in on these two channels here. Okay, so I have kind of drums on this channel and then since it's kind of low end on, on this channel here. Over here to my left hand side, I've broken this into two, two sections. So on the left is loops, so I can load in different loops from my tracks. And on the right is longer, longer pieces of audio. So each of these tracks comes up on one channel here, and each of these tracks comes up on one channel here. And in the middle then I have the drum machine for improvised live, live drums, but also with the, with, the, with the synth or three or three clone, I can kind of live jam performing, performing drums with that if, if I want to. So between all these things, there's a lot of different improvisational possibilities. And that's really a core of my live performance and my studio work as well improvisation and capturing things live. So for example, if I write a concept album for an event, 
I'll, I'll work on that in the studio, I'll perform it at the event. That that performance exists only in that moment in time, which is I think is really cool. So the people who are at that show hear that album in that format, in that structure, but it's never heard that way again because, you know, it's live. So, and having the two octave tracks gives me that flexibility. So if I, if I break this octave track down a bit more as well, so how I'm using this one. So in this one I'm using more kind of structured audio. So I've got loops here on this side coming up here. I've got longer stretches of audio, which enables me to, you know, put in tracks that are recorded, maybe a, a, a three, four, five minute synth recording that enables me to play longer pieces of audio. Also gives you flexibility to DJ. If you want to do a DJ set with the octave track, you can. And uh, then in the middle here, obviously I have my drums. And over here on the right side then, the octave track mark one. So how I'm working this is I've got 16 banks and I put a track on each bank and within each bank I have 16 patterns so I can deconstruct a track and reanimate it within the within the octa track and reanimate it live live in a club you know so it gives me a huge amount of flexibility and improvisational skills and during the pandemic during when everyone was streaming and stuff what this enabled me to do as well what was really interesting about that time period was I was able to really break down tracks and put pieces from one track and another, put them together into into uh, into the machine, but then also, you know, clock that to my nine and nine, and you know have MIDI from here triggering uh, my SH09 synth, which is the other brother of the SH101 over here, and it just gives you a lot of creative possibilities. So let's jump into this a bit more, and I'll show you how we play. Okay, so let's jump into the live rig. At the centerpiece here, we have the Model 1 mixer. Over to the left, we have the Octatrack Mark II. This is the master clock or master sync. Everything's syncing to this, so we have the Roland TR8 drum machine. So over here on the left side, all these parts here coming in channel one. These are like loops from different tracks. Over here, I have longer pieces of audio. This enables me to add in longer stretches or longer compositions or recordings from synth here. That comes in channel two or channel B. And here in channel three, I've got the Roland TR8 drum machine. I can improvise live drums here. So I just have that channel up and I can use the faders on that to bring that in. And over here on the right side, I basically use this to deconstruct full tracks. So what we have here is a track per bank and then within each bank is different loops or different patterns. So within each pattern, I'm working with like an eight, even though they're four bar, four bar loops, I'm trying to keep it in eight or 16 bar phrases. So let's get started, okay? So I'm gonna start here with the track, We Don't Flip, it was released on records. So if I hit play here, we can hear that playing through. So that's obviously the intro piece. So once, once I'm happy to move on to the next phase, I'll just move to the next pattern. And here with the Roland Tier 8, I can just fade in different drum sounds as I wish. So at this stage, you can start thinking about bringing in some audio from the Octrack Mark II. I'm gonna bring in a loop from a track called This One. This is released on the High Brazil label. Filtering at the low with the filter.
start thinking of bringing in maybe a longer piece of audio. There you have it. So I continue on like that. Working this way enables me to take a number of different approaches to the live set. What I can do really is I can improvise here with tracks, deconstruct them, reanimate them. Over here I can work with loops. I can add in longer stretches of audio. And here in the middle I can live improvise drums. And if I wish I can trigger MIDI to an external drum machine, run it through here. So I can actually do a track on the fly here between these two machines. So this enables me to perform longer with a more improvised way, but also keep some structure there as well. For example, playing somewhere like Sisyphus in Berlin, where I've got like a four hour slot to, to work with. This gives me a lot of flexibility, enables me to play for an extended period of time. Playing live is extremely rewarding, I highly recommend it. So if you're gonna play live, I have a couple of tips for you. Firstly, preparation. Make sure you're ready for the show, think ahead, know how long you're playing for. Make sure you have enough audio ready for the performance as well. It's not like a DJ performance where you can stick in the USB and play thousands of songs. So you need to be able to make sure you have the right audio that you're telling your story as an artist on the day. So that's hugely important and you're getting your message across artistically. Second is knowing your hardware. You need to know your hardware inside out. If you've got a new machine, especially something like an Octatrack where there's a learning curve, you need to give yourself time to learn that machine and be comfortable with it playing in a live context. Third is structure. Make sure you're structuring your track in, or structuring your ideas and structuring your set in a good way. Your set should tell a story, have a beginning, middle, end. Also, if you're in improvisation mode, that also needs to have structure. Nobody wants to listen to you jam out an idea for 19 minutes. So, you know, think in terms of intro, verse, chorus, drops, all this kind of stuff, even if you're in improvisational mode. So structure is hugely important. Four is sound check. Make sure you get down to the club beforehand, give yourself an hour, familiarize yourself with the sound system. Because you're playing live, you're not gonna come in maybe as loud as a CDJ. So you need to make sure that your line levels are on par with the DJs before and after. So you have to check this with the sound engineer before. And lastly, be present, enjoy the show, enjoy the performance, you know, prepare accordingly and throw yourself into it. It's extremely rewarding. You know, with live performance, you're, you're telling a story directly from studio to the audience. So, you know, throw everything into it and enjoy the process. I'm Hi Brazil, this is How I Play, live from HBS Studios. Thank you.